First of all, let me extend out a very big thank you to uh, Luke and your guys for yeah. you. yeah. Um, the last few days have been interesting. Uh, I am born and raised in Aurora as well, and uh, my father is the kind of community. Uh, liaison where I don't go anywhere without anybody knowing him and the more that I became an ambassador in this community I'm starting to feel the same reaction for myself so when you hear that uh, that some of people have been killed in your community you know that uh, it's not even possible for you to have a degree of separation from them I've been trying to figure out a way to construct my mind around violence of such sorts, but sometimes it's, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Um, but what I do think of are like the people in my life who have really, really had the ability to convert tragedy into a moment of, of great, great realization of all the potential that we have stored within us. This poem is a dedication to Mary Lee Mays. She wasn't the Ben Gay and Matlock type. Mm. Mm. Oof, my mind's not in there. We'll go one more second. You're good. Come on. Take a tap. She wasn't a Ben Gay and Matt Locke type. Nor was she an expert in household chore techniques or even chocolate chip cookie recipes. She didn't have an oversized grumpy cat or some undersized chirpy dog. <laughs> but there were parakeets within her heart that kept her company with only a set. She grew up in Pendergrass. I guess that's somewhere in north central Georgia, so just deep enough in the south that one could actually see the surface. As a child, she'd observe the flight patterns of turkey vultures. She loved the way that their feathers frayed through the southern sky because where she was from, they were the only things breaking the color line. The experts say that these buzzards share the same soaring shadows as bald eagles, so sitting there, feeling like a carcass, simultaneously she found freedom. So her mother put her and her sister on the first feather that they could find up north because they heard that up there, Jim, he doesn't clip his clothes wings. So her mother became the first Nubian in Queens to own her own palace. This was back when there was actually enough Big Apple to go around the table. In 1995, on a family vacation, I went to visit this place for the first time. Upon anticipation of patio rocking chairs, bear claw bathtubs, and cypress floors, I was greeted by a hoarder's paradise. Priceless papers were piled to the ceiling. The only place to sit was on the back patio, and there, surrounding all of us, were stacks upon stacks of bird cages. Hundreds of them, no birds, just wrought iron bridged by welding joints in Victorian fashion. All of these devices of entrapment were constructed in such beauty, I didn't know what to think. You see, last week, I was in a first store, and I came across a vintage bird cage. I stood there staring and wondering, why is there so much beauty here? But that took me back to my nana, and how it must have felt losing her son, husband, and the civil rights movement at the same time. And I began to think, what better way to fend for someone's freedom? and to collect those things that bind us mm. by leaving just one less cage in the world and ensuring another scene of formless flight. So I started to wonder, how many people did this woman set free when she was my father with a one-way Greyhound ticket in hand and sunglasses on the back of his neck, drinking and reposing the past, but head to the mile high, turned out to feel that low again. Was she the miracle that made my mother fall into the mountains? Did she swoop my grandfather to Kansas misery? Did she hold the keys to my throat? Did she stitch my cousin into the blue angel? Air Force Falcon that they became could you feel like you want a civil rights movement in your own backyard? Let me tell you something. When your time comes, how many people will feel selflessly unshackled? How many doors will you leave open? How many bars will you bend or file through? Did you make sure that the perch around you went unoccupied? Did you tend to their feathers? Did you feed them enough wisdom before their takeoff when the cage bird sings? Did their hymns rattle the locks? Or did you swallow their tunes when the doves cried? Did you give any weight to their tears when that rooster crowed? Did you empower it to fly, man? Why'd you have to go? When we sat around your coffin, 
I think we all knew that your soul was soaring above us. Your fellas, they must have been framed, Sky. Everyone in attendance was just a cage that you collected. 